I think we are doing well. What is killing Nigeria is the elites and the political class. It has nothing to do with the citizens who are law abiding, who are struggling to keep life going. It is the elitist class, the political class, who have either lost in the government and trying to find their relevance back. They will go back to their ethnic base and start preaching ethnicity that we are each out because we belong to either Fulani or Yoruba or Igbo and so on and so forth. But when they are in government, they don't remember that they belong to this class of tribes or religion because they have formed a cartel. You know, they, they, they are together on that page of exploiting the country. But the moment they lost out, they will go back and start whipping sentiment and emotion. And that is why the laws are weak. Because anybody who has served this country in the capacity either of a minister or a governor and what have you, and found using language that is not really in tandem with our national interest, should have a consequences to face. Otherwise, we'll continue going along this way and our children, our grandchildren will continue to go along this way. It is high time for people to understand that, look, nobody created land, nobody created tribe, nobody created religion. We all find ourselves in it. And you cannot change it because you have no power to change nature. Nature has established its authority. You cannot question it. What you need to do is to align yourself with the nature and develop where you are and make it a place that others can come and envy. Just the way people travel to UK, look at Dubai. If you might not 20, 25 years out of Dubai, it's not better than Ghana. But because they got a visionary leader, is the center of the world right now. It's the center of attraction. Go to Egypt recently. Look at the development. Because I've gotten a president who is committed to developing the system. Why can't we do it? Was it that we don't have the resources? Nigeria is one of the richest countries on earth. There's no reason why we cannot link every six zones of the country through superhighways. It's easier, it's cheaper, it's economically viable. The money is there. Look at individuals that are in government that are looting trillions of naira. What happened to them? Even as we are talking today, they are being shielded. Look at the messages going on in the NPC in the name of subsidy. We have asked so many questions, who are the list of people that have been paid subsidy? There is none. Campaign, Bola, I mean, President Bari campaign on subsidy removal, he called it a fraud when he was campaigning. But he ran his government under that fraud throughout. Now Bola took the silver bullet by saying that I have removed the subsidy. But we are waiting for the details of that subsidy to have been removed. Was it not an underdevelopment? Was it not compromising the country? It's absolutely compromising the country. Look at the recatering or preferring of the CBN. I hope they would classify the, the investigation that is going on. You will pity this country. And these are people that have benefited directly from the system. Most of them were under the scholarship of the federal government of Nigeria. They went to the best universities. Yet they are the ones ruining the country. Because we have no laws that create specific deterrence for individuals that undermine the authority of Nigeria. Look at the, the segregation going on. Look at the southeast. Very proper, uh, prosperous people, business oriented, brilliant, intelligent. Look at how politicians have caused the killings and the memes and the killings of business. Poverty is ravaging everywhere now. Look at the northwest. Very homogeneous people kidnapping, killing their own. Who are you blaming for that? So if it is on ethnic basis, these people that are homogeneous, one tribe, why are they killing and maiming themselves? Something is fundamentally wrong. Something is disconnecting. And because we have failed in our leadership, from our religious scholars to traditional uh, rulers, to, to, to all of us that are elite, we have compromised this country. And we cannot get it right unless those who are responsible are being punished. And you have leaders that have capacity to create deterrence in all the strata of the country. It is possible Nigeria will be the greatest country on earth. But you have to deal with the facts. You have to deal with the reality. You have to punish those who compromise the country. Otherwise, I don't see any other way. No country was earth have grown out of lawlessness and impunity, rascality and recklessness. No country on earth. Go to here, uh, Cameroon, just Cameroon. Go to Benin Republic. You can't disobey the traffic light. But here, what happens? So who, who are we blaming? We must take responsibility. We are all responsible. All of us, including you, you people in the media, the politicians, we are all responsible. We underreport tragedy. 
individuals who have compromised the country, they were protected because they belong to one interest or the other. And this is not good for us as a nation. We must start firm. We must be decisive. Our generation cannot be forgiving. Me and you, our generation cannot be forgiving. Because we have traveled everywhere. We have seen the best of infrastructure. And we wish to have it here. And we have the opportunity to have it. But we are dealing with everything along ethnic religious line. Now, give me the statistics from 1999. Don't even go during Shagari regime. During Shagari regime, Shagari have fully scale utilization of power. There was no discrimination during Shagari regime. As I'm talking to you, I can remember majority of Shagari ministers. But I cannot remember most of Buhari's ministers. I can remember up to 10 Buhari's ministers. Because they are very low profile people. Now, if you minus military administration contribution to the development of Nigeria, physical infrastructure, and so on and so forth, and, and then you look at what the civilian government have done, it means that there are more embedded corruption. There is more uh, act of disloyalty in a democratic dispensation compared to even military dispensation. Because democracy is supposed to be government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Now, if you go to a village, you will not see there is a government. But we had a military administration where there is a network of connectivity to the community level about government policies and programs. Do you have it today under military under uh, democratic administration? The answer is no. The citizen knows about what is going on in government. The answer is no. Whose responsibility to communicate with them and even to seek their views when taking a national decision? It is a government. Do you have it? The answer is yes. Are they using it? The answer is no. They abandoned it. The national orientation agency is the same moms are before that have ravaged every sector of this country. What are they doing today? So, in as much as we want to shift blame, we must take also responsibility. Because if a foundation has been laid, it's your responsibility to move that foundation forward to a variable height. It's not for you to keep on killing that foundation and shifting blame on people who have contributed immensely to the foundation and development of the country. So, politicians must take note that they are part of the progressive level that this country is going through today. Go and take the budget provisions and the implementations from the ministries, agencies, and parastatus. Go through it. You are a journalist. Go and find out the implementation of the budget, whether it's been implemented or not. At where and what, what are the areas that have been budgeted and been implemented? You will weep. And who do you blame? Do you blame the founding fathers? Do you blame military regime that have done their bit and quit? Or who do you blame? We have a democratically elected government right now. They inherited insecurity. They inherited grounded economy. From who? From the same, from the same party of the same government of APC. And it's the reason why there was nothing to showcase in 100 days in office. It was a grounded system that was inherited. Completely grounded. He's struggling to be on his feet up to now that I'm talking to you. They can't do anything. So, who do you blame? You blame for my military by Abangira or you blame Ubasanjo or who do you blame? We take responsibility. Our, our, our ability to move the country forward is extremely very low. But our ability to steal is extremely very high. And without caring what happened, look at Abuja today. It's the center of kidnapping. Everywhere. Under, under which government? under a civilian, democratically elected government. They inherited this insecurity. They inherited uh, uh, weaponization of poverty. And yet, nothing tangible is being done about it. It's clear. He got 8 point something million votes. As a, as, as, a, as a journalist and a historian, go and find out what was the vote that produced President Shou Shagari. Coming back, what was the vote that produced Jonathan? What was the vote that produced Buhari and others? So which means that he need to build that legitimacy base. Given his background, knowing his performance record, I was in Lagos when he was a governor, my thought and my conviction 
the bola will be far far better than President Muhammad Buhari. President Muhammad Buhari Mr. was the lowest Nigeria have witnessed. The killing, the maiming, the barbarism, the segregation, offers everywhere. And then coming from that perspective, belonging to the same platform of APC, we are dipping more and more into trouble. And now you were sworn in as a president. Now only appointment is tilted towards one thing. Somebody from, from London, one of my very close friends for years, in fact, I've not spoken to her for close to five, six years. She sent me a very pathetic, long message. She said, look, let me tell you this. We, the Yorubas, we are not happy the way the appointments are going. Taking from what Buhari have did, he damaged the house of Lani. He created fight. Now, if Bola continues the way he's going, he's going to pinch a major fight between other ethnic tribes and the Yorubas. That we are not in for that. We are in for a Nigeria that is well spread, well acceptable, well accommodating. Is the reason why we said that, look, since there's a lot of imbalance in the system, even within the APC, try to get a government of national unity. First, you need political environment, even for investors domestically to invest, not to talk of international investors. And you need to bring a national reconciliation processes. Look at every consign and, and nip it. And then build a confidence of a generational leaders that are vast, that are exposed, that have what it takes to drive a process. Now you appoint ministers that have not held any position, even councillorship, to drive a ministry. And you expect them to drive that ministry to a success. What miracle will they perform? Without any experience, based, based on patronage, you brought in people without looking at national interest. How can you move on? Which means you will be experimenting for two years in that ministry to know even what is going on. You've not been in that, that chain of administration. There's no any experience along the line. So even those that were brought in, you, you, you can hardly mention maybe six or seven that you can, yes, they are very good, they are very versatile, they are very excellent. Others are out of patronage. They campaign for me. The service to the country was less in the analysis and the concentration. You change the service chiefs. Yet the security situation is destroyed. Like I mentioned to you, Abuja is now a center of kidnapping. How do you explain that? Which means nobody is safe. So what I expect is that me and you, that belongs to this generation, where the lead, our elders have failed in providing decent leadership, we must keep our differences aside. This country is well endowed. Every part of this country is endowed by God. What we need to do is to create a platform of economic viability, amend the Land Use Act. States should develop their own natural mineral resources, build their own resource base, create a percentage for federal, state take care of their own bills and their own developmental processes. But the way it is, you will deny the state due to incumbency or protocol to develop at their own face, given their natural mineral resources, is not acceptable. The population is expanding over 200 something million. In the next 10, 15 years, Nigeria will clock about 13 million population. And the res population is a wealth. It's not a deficiency. Unless you have irresponsible government, then the population will turn against the nation. There will not be growth. There will be violence. You cannot feed the population. The demand have outweighed the supply and therefore violence is inevitable. Anarchy is inevitable. And that is the face that we are right now. We are having peace before, simply because we have food at home to eat. Even if we don't have the component to make it sweet, but we can, we have a food to eat and feed the family. But today you don't have the food. The money is not available. You can't get access to it. People have gone into drugs. The younger generations are into drugs. They are into weapons for survival. Who do you blame? You blame the military administration? Or you blame us politicians? We have not learned our lesson after military coup, military coup, military coup. In 1999, I was part of the formation of PDP from G7. I know how we suffered. There was no even money. 
contributors will be 20, 40, 50,000 Naira. We went around this country to form PDP. We were able to form a government. So the economy was open. But what happened today? Where are we today? We must take responsibility. Otherwise, all those who are saying there is no nation or the constitution was not written by civilian, uh, who, who wrote the constitution? Even during the militarism, are they not Nigerians? Are they not civilians that were recruited lawyers to write the constitution? Are you denying them being citizens of Nigeria simply because they, they are part of the draft of the constitution under military regime? Those military leaders, are they not Nigerians? So we are not in an era of military regime now. We've been in the era of democratically elected government since 1999. What happens? What are the, what are the development? What are the statistics that you have? Given every administration, what have they achieved in terms of empowering Nigeria, reducing the level of unemployment? Millions of graduates roaming the streets are turning into drugs addicts, taxi drivers, and so on and so forth. Who do you blame? We are responsible for it.